So details on the latest patch arriving late today along with takedown at Maliban's black site have not long landed and are absolutely massive, offering many changes to the game and so much more. Today we go through each and every note, gearbox have dropped, covering every detail. How's it going guys? My name is DP Jen. I'd like to thank you for stopping by and checking out the video. If you do enjoy it, leaving a like really helps out and subscribe if you want to see more Borderlands. On screen now you can see my weekly giveaway along with last week's winner. To be in with a chance of winning this yourself, simply follow the instructions on screen now and good luck. Okay, so the patch, the notes for this patch are absolutely massive and there's a lot to get through, so let's get into it. Today, we will release an update and hotfix for Borderlands 3 by or before 5pm PST that adds a bunch of exciting new content in addition to addressing community requests and reported concerns. Below are the notes for both today's patch and hotfix. Now 5pm PST is 1am, 1am in the morning UK time. So yes, I will be playing this first thing tomorrow because I got sleep to be getting. Okay, so notes for the patch 4. New content, take down at Maliban's black site. Lowly has recruited the Vault Hunters to destroy a top secret weapon Maliban has been developing at their black site. You and your squad should prepare for an extreme challenge because this content is balanced for 4 players at at least 50. You can gain access to the black site via a mission found on Sanctuary 3 after completing the main campaign with that character. Takedown features special rules not found in the rest of the game. Respawning is disabled, so make sure you and your co-op partners get second wind or you'll spectate until the team wipes. Wow, that's craziness. If you do die, you're not out permanently, die during the first half, you'll get to rejoin your team if they defeat their Valkyrie squad. If you're out the second half, but your team manages to defeat Walter and the Invincible, you'll get to respawn to enjoy the rewards you didn't completely earn. Make sure your squad is in this session before you throw the switch inside the airlock, or anyone who joins after the switch is thrown joins as a spectator. Mayhem 4. Mayhem 4 is here for players looking for the toughest challenge in the game. Mayhem 4 adds another increase to enemy health, increases the loot drop chances and adds a set of new legendaries. Awesome. Because the health value greatly increased, Mayhem 4 also slightly adjusts the random modifier system. Mayhem 4 will only roll one positive modifier for the player and one enemy bonus modifier. We want players to want to try different builds without severely hampering their ability to take down enemies in Mayhem 4. Note that Mayhem 1 to 3 are unchanged. In addition to increasing enemy health and adjusting the modifiers, Mayhem 4 contains new legendary weapons and class mods for players to hunt. These new pieces of gear will contribute to new builds and new ways to kill enemies. Sounds cool. To support Mayhem 4, we've changed the Mayhem station slightly. Players will activate Mayhem through their center pillar and increase or decrease levels by using the pillars on each side. Looking forward, we will monitor the challenge of Mayhem 4 closely. We're working hard on Mayhem 2.0, which will add brand new gameplay additions to Mayhem mods in the future. Until then, we hope you enjoy the challenge and new loot. So yes, this is coming later on today, by the time you're watching this video, probably it's already landed and you just want details on what this patch offers, well that's what I'm here for guys. But yes, Mayhem 4 sounds pretty cool and I cannot wait to dive into this free event. Bank expansion, all characters now begin the game with 20 bank slots instead of 10. The existing bank SDUs will give everyone a total of 100 available spaces. An additional 10 bank SDUs are available to purchase in Marcus's shop on Sanctuary 3 using in-game cash currency, awarding 20 spaces for a grand total of 300 total bank spaces. Now this, I'm not going to lie, this is an increase I never ever expected. I mean I expected it to be doubled, maybe even tripled, but damn, 300, 250 extra spaces. Wow, amazing. Dedicated loot pools for bosses. All bosses have been updated with new loot pools that give them dedicated legendary items to drop. Players can now discover which bosses drop their favourite gear and more easily farm their favourite items. Let the hunt begin. So that's pretty cool and yes you can expect guys from me and certain bosses on what they drop. So that's amazing. Additional vending machines. The following environments have received additional vending machines. They can typically be found before bosses or the midway point in larger environments. Athenus, Atlas HQ, Electricity, Jacob's Estate, Horatius Canopy, Tanzania Runes and the Power of Stars. 
Target dummy. Players can take out their aggression or test their gear on a handsome jack target inside the shooting range on Sanctuary 3. Now this will make a lot of my videos much much easier in terms of reviewing weapons and basically just calculating damage and so much more. So that's a great addition. End game character balance. For this patch we adjusted many passives involving companions such as Iron Bear, Digiclone and Flax pets in general. We wanted to increase their viability for later levels of mayhem while also targeting some passives that were underperforming compared to some others. Iron Bear saw increases to the base scaling and additional bonuses were added through passives and augments. We allowed some of Zane's kill skill bonuses to stack up to two times, including their output under certain conditions. Flex pets also saw some increases over level to their damage so that they didn't feel underpowered for Mayhem mode. We are currently happy with a variety of Amora's builds, but we are always monitoring feedback and will adjust if necessary. Moles. Iron Bear damage increased per level to a total of just under 150 at max level. Wow. Desperate Measures now gives Iron Bear the bonus too. Experimental Munitions. Iron Bear also deals bonus fire damage on critical hits. Scorching RPMs also grants increased hardpoint damage by 5% per level. Vamp, when Iron Bear deals damage, Iron Bear receives half the healing bonus. Iron Bear now launches barrels when a player melees them. Increase Iron Bear's bubble shield from 20 to 50% of Moles' health. Well, Zane, Sentinel damage scale increased by 2% per level. Danny Brook, full pocket of grenades, cool hand, violent violence, and violent speed bonuses now stack twice. Well, Fixed violent momentum to scale more at higher movement speeds. Best serve cold radius and damage increased by 2% per level. Confident confidence increased max weapon damage bonus from 20 to 35%. Changed trick of the light element to cryo and increased bonus from 18 to 36%. Barrel time duration increased from 15 to 30% per action skill. Double barrels bonus increased from 20 to 25%. Crooked Breather now restores 50% of the clone's health after a swap. Pocket Full of Grenades bonus slightly decreased from 6.5 to 5% as it now stacks. Violent Violence bonus slightly decreased from 43% as it now stacks. And Flak. Ambush Predator now has a hood icon when the buff is active. Increase the pet damage to scale 10-5% per level instead of 9. Added pet damage to Grim Harvest at 7% per level. Added pet damage to Moles Dangerous Game at 9% per level. Added pet damage to Interplanetary Stalker at 1% per stack per level. Added pet damage to Furious Attack at 0.6% per stack. Added pet damage to the Fast and the Furious at 10% per level. Lick the Wounds gain their pet damage buff after reviving the player. Increase pet damage for Psycho Head on Stick from 10 to 20%. Increase damage impact tactics from 5 to 7% per level. Adjusted Magvor to not reward critical hit bonuses when receiving damage from self damage. Okay, so some crazy changes there, some pretty good changes too. Loving the ones for Zane, not gonna lie, as I'm a Zane main. Stability. Fixed multiple crashes that occasionally could when interacting with the Echo menu. Fixed a crash that occasionally could after quitting to the main menu multiple times. Fixed a crash that occasionally occurred when transitioning to Athena's during a 4 player multiplayer session. Fixed a crash that occasionally occurred when Iron Bear was destroyed. Fixed a crash that occasionally occurred when entering or exiting Iron Bear. Fixed a crash that occasionally occurred while in heavy combat with Varkids. Fixed a crash that occasionally occurred in networked games. Fixed a crash that occasionally occurred when split screen party joins another game during Marcus intro. Fixed a crash that occasionally occurred when a split screen user quit to the main menu. Fixed a rare crash that occasionally occurred when dropping a piece of gear on PC. Fixed a crash that occasionally occurred after three clients joined their host. Fixed a rare crash that occasionally occurred when destructible environment art took damage. Fixed a rare crash that occasionally occurred when a client transitioned to Desolation's Edge. Fixed a rare crash that could occur when entering Fade Away. Fixed a rare crash related to the time of day of an environment. Fixed a rare crash that occasionally occurred as a result of improper text fields. Fixed a crash related to the minimap widget. Fixed multiple crashes that occasionally occurred when players fast travelled. Fixed a reported issue that prevent the application from terminating properly. Fixed a reported issue where the news widget would hang indefinitely. Disabled the benchmark feature when in co-op group. 
Wow, that was a mouthful of fixed area crash. Damn. UI. Improve the overall performance in menus. Note, we are still working on additional performance updates that will be implemented in future updates. Improve performance of bank. PlayStation 4 only. Fixed a reported issue that prevented some players from marking items as junk or favorite on PS4. Fixed a reported issue where sorting the inventory by type, sometimes sorting the inventory by score. Added sort by rarity to bank, inventory, item trading and vending machines selling. Clients now receive an indication of why their travel attempt failed. Updated names in the credits addressed a reported issue where corrupted characters were sometimes displayed for some fast travel stations in Japanese and simplified Chinese. Addressed a reported issue where characters were sometimes displayed in the incorrect direction for some fast travel stations and level transitions in traditional Chinese. Addressed a reported issue where comparing class mods sometimes displayed the incorrect icons on the abbreviated item cards. Addressed a reported issue where item slots could sometimes overlap when viewing player storage. Addressed a reported issue where the travel countdown timer could sometimes be interrupted by open chat window. PC only. Addressed a reported issue where occasionally mouse input would be lost. Addressed a reported issue where item cards at the beginning of the game didn't display. Addressed a reported issue where missions were sometimes not sorting correctly in the mission lock. Addressed a reported issue where the friends list could occasionally be too long for split screen. Addressed a reported issue where a player could sometimes lose their hood in the split screen. Addressed a reported issue where the info panel briefly displayed when looking at planet challenges. Addressed a reported issue where players could sometimes be sent to the wrong location when selecting a destination quickly in the map. And then addressed a rare issue where a dialogue box could not be dismissed. Wow! A lot of issues being fixed there, people. Fair play to Gearbox. On to missions. Addressed a reported issue that could sometimes cause NPCs to get stuck during a teleport. Addressed a reported progression blocker where an NPC leading the player could sometimes break if one of the players left the game. Addressed a reported progression blocker where Lilith could sometimes become stuck during the mission from the ground up. Addressed a reported progression blocker that occasionally occurred when two players tried to accept the quest item at the same time from the slot machines during the mission sanctuary. Addressed a few reported progression blockers that occasionally occurred when travelling to another map and back during the mission sanctuary. Addressed a reported progression blocker where Lorelei's cyclone could sometimes be lost after players enter and exit the menu during the mission hostile takeover. Addressed a reported progression blocker where the door into Kilovolt's arena sometimes wouldn't open during the mission kill Kilovolt. Addressed a reported progression blocker where Amber Lamp's bot could sometimes spawn during the mission Dynasty Diner and leave the combat area. Addressed a reported progression block where Bloodshine's sister could sometimes not spawn during the mission, Proof of Wife. Addressed a reported progression block where Rise Ball could sometimes become stuck during the mission, Space Laser Attack. Addressed a reported progression block where Brick could sometimes become stuck in a concrete block during the mission, Hammerlot. I actually had that issue myself. Addressed a reported progression blocker where Tina sometimes couldn't be spoken to during the mission, Hammerlot. Addressed a reported progression blocker where Billy the Anointed would sometimes disappear during the mission, Layer of the Happy. Addressed a reported progression blocker where split screen clients could sometimes not progress the objective, equip Black Flame during the mission, which is Brew. Addressed a reported progression blocker where Balax could sometimes stop paving during the mission, The Family Jewel. Addressed a reported progression blocker where Tannis sometimes couldn't be spoke to during a mission in the Great Vault. Addressed a reported progression blocker where Tannis sometimes wouldn't interact with a critical mission objective during a mission in the Shadow of Starlight. Addressed a reported progression blocker where a Tink could sometimes jump outside of the barrier during a mission Trial of Fever. Addressed a few reported progression blockers during a mission A Trial of Survivor. Crazy. Okay, so onto gameplay. Rare hunt and bounty enemies now always match the player level. Made adjustments to default zoom speed for gamepad. Mayhem mods that cancel each other out can no longer be active at the same time. Shields that start regenerating immediately after depleting now properly trigger not depleted events. Moles is no longer able to infinitely stack the damage, health and shield regen buffs from the Brawler Ward Legendary Shield after equipping the Bloodletter class mod. Rough Rider Shield properly triggers depleted augments when equipped. Addressed a reported issue where certain shields could provide buffs to players even when not equipped. Players can no longer stack the health regeneration buff of the Brawl Award legendary shield on another shield when repeatedly equipping and unequipping the Brawl Award shield in the inventory. 
Addressed a reported issue where class mods and artifacts were sometimes accumulating action skill cooldowns when respecking. Addressed a report issue where how Walker and Anji parts could sometimes be incorrectly weighted. Addressed a report issue that sometimes prevented the Zane's barrier from blocking e tech weapon projectiles. Addressed a report issue where Flax pets could sometimes be frozen without showing any of the effects of being frozen. Addressed a report issue where the action skill cooldown timer of Flax Gamma Burst could sometimes stack cooldowns when players revived or spawned a pet each time. Addressed a report issue where the skill augment active tracking for Moses sometimes didn't track target enemies in turrets. Addressed a report issue where the mayhem modifier sometimes failed to affect Iridium gained. Addressed a report issue where parts of the anvil were sometimes not properly balanced. Addressed a report issue where the mother of dragons sometimes wouldn't drop her loot. Addressed a report issue where rare spawn enemies might not have spawned during a mission if players had already defeated their enemy during that session. Addressed a report issue where loot sometimes wouldn't spawn after a player had found all Iridium writings. Wow, so many changes people. On to general. DX12 is now the default graphics API on Windows 10 for users with AMD video cards. Added support for future types of hotfixes. Added spectator mode for takedowns. Explosion effects now dissipate faster. Bullet traces passing through Zane's shield are now more transparent. Improve the general audio performance and memory usage. Save games triggered by money or changes in the infantry have been throttled. Addressed a reported issue where save files had the potential to be deleted after the game crashed in the middle of saving. Addressed a reported issue where guardian rank and tokens could potentially be lost. Addressed a reported issue where equipped weapon skins were sometimes not properly displayed. Addressed a reported issue where echo themes were sometimes not displayed properly for court players. Addressed a reported issue where Clay and Wainwright's Jacobs would sometimes not appear properly in their title cards. Addressed a reported issue where a boundary turret in Floodmore Basin would sometimes not detect Iron Bear. Addressed a reported issue where Iron Bear could sometimes fall through the platform during the Grave Ward fight. Addressed a reported issue where players would sometimes load into Tanzania ruins facing the wrong direction. Addressed a reported issue where players could sometimes become invulnerable when swapping artifacts. Addressed a reported issue where Rack could sometimes get stuck behind geometry in the system of slaughter. Addressed a reported issue where players could rejoin the arena in the system of slaughter after dying. Addressed a reported issue where depth of field would sometimes not work properly in split screen. Addressed a reported issue where the player's shield bar could sometimes disappear from the hood. Addressed a reported issue where the vault symbol on landing screen sometimes appeared incorrectly on consoles. Addressed a reported issue where events would occasionally not work properly if Echo Castle was not enabled before loading into a map. Addressed multiple issues with badass events not spawning in certain maps for the Twitch EcoCast extension. Addressed a reported issue that prevented stats from sometimes properly incrementing while in vehicles. Addressed a reported issue where service bots audio would sometimes ignore acoustic data. Addressed a reported issue where player characters would sometimes call out half files when already at max health. Addressed multiple issues where audio was sometimes muffled or lost. Addressed multiple issues where players could sometimes lose gravity permanently. An edit group hint is now hidden when input is not available. Damn, so many changes and so many fixes to glitches we have all seen and used. Well, wow. hotfix notes. Hotfixes are separate from the update and applied at the main menu when Borderlands 3 is connected to the internet. Unlike updates, hotfixes are not permanent. They are temporarily stored in memory during the game session and last upon exiting Borderlands 3. To ensure that you receive hotfixes, make sure that your system is connected to the internet when Borderlands 3 boots up and hang out on the menu screen until you see a background change. Right now you're looking for pumpkins. Addressed a report concern that the legendary Maliwan recursion ricochet sometimes failed to target ghosts. Adjusted Rampage's item pool to allow for specific legendaries to drop. Addressed a reported concern that Boomstickle sometimes showed incorrect part text. We still have a lot of things that we are working on, including additional performance and stability updates, mayhem updates in 2.0, skippable cinematics, and more. As always, we appreciate the feedback and support we've seen from the community. If you experience any issues with Wildland 3 or today's patch, please submit a ticket to support.2k.com. And wow guys, that's got to be the biggest patch I have covered so far, absolutely massive, with insane changes for sure. So yes guys, just another news video bringing you the latest surrounding Borderlands 3.
If you guys enjoyed the video, leaving a like really helps. And if you're new around here and want to see more Borderlands, be sure to subscribe. And if you never want to miss a video upload, you can turn notifications on by hitting that bell button. But guys, thanks as always for stopping by. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and hopefully I will see you on that next one.